welcome everyone to my lecture today uh i need you to confirm uh if you guys are hearing me clearly or can you confirm or if you hear me clearly okay thank you so much uh i actually want somebody to talk because um yesterday I, I was not able to hear somebody talking and i want to look at the situation today uh, can somebody just talk by uh, saying yes i want to confirm if i can hear yes okay thank you so much i can hear you clearly now okay uh i want to welcome everyone to my lecture today and um, before i get started today uh, uh, after today's lecture i'm actually going to record uh, you know there's going to be another lecture that i will record and send to everyone because uh, our meeting on monday is to go over practice questions okay i've already sent practice questions um i've sent it uh the, all the practice questions to you last night you can check the announcement section and of course you're actually uh going to see what i you can start studying what I start, what I sent, but on Monday, I'm actually going to go over that. But you know what? After today's lecture, I'm going to pre-record the last lecture. Okay, I'm going to pre-record that and I'm going to send that to you because I know we may not be able to finish uh, what we want to do today. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to start from the yesterday's material where we were talking about where already started uh, the method of moment um, generating uh, functions. Uh, let me have a recap on what we started yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at the function of random variable. And um, I walk you through different kind of method that can actually be used to derive the probability function of a new variable that is a function of another uh, variable. Okay, I I started by working you with method of uh, distribution function. Uh, we use uh, method of uh, conditioning. We also talk about method of transformation, where the Jacobian transformation was involved. And uh, you know what? Uh, another method is what we call the method of moving generating uh, functions. I remember yesterday, uh, I told you uh, that if we have two random variables, uh, X and Y, if X and Y are random variable, and they have the same CDF, okay? Uh, this is CDF of F, this is CDF of Y, okay? If they have the same uh, CDF, okay, then automatically, if the moment generating function exists, the moment generating function will actually be equal. Okay, and let me tell you this: the moment uh, the moment generating function are equal, then their CDF is going to be equal. I'm going to say that again. If if the two random if the random variable x and y have the same moment generating function, automatically they actually going to have the same CDF. Now. Uh, the something I want to walk you through now. We have a uh, property, okay, that I want to consider. Um, you know, X is a random variable. Y is also a random variable, but Y is a function of X. Take a look at that. Now, we want to find the moment generating function of Y, okay? If you want to find the moment generating function of Y, you know, you're going to have MY of T, right? Okay, and it's going to be written as that. And what is Y? Y is A, S plus B, look at that. Now, if I open that, if I expand that, okay? If I expand this, this is what I'm actually going to have. And if you take a look at what I have inside here, if you take a look at what I have inside here, that is a moment generating function, okay? That's another moment generating function. And what you can see here, we've been able to, uh, you know, split the whole things into uh, the moment generating function of X, okay, at A multiplied by this, and that will give us the moment generating function of Y. So, which means if Y is a linear function of X, okay, if you want, if you are seeking to get the moment generating function of Y, then parts of, you know, what you're going to see 
Okay, it's going to be a combination of moment generated function of x at a point A and by multiply by exponential raised to the power bt. You're going to see that b here is a constant, right? And the a here is um, acting like a slope. Okay, so take a look at that. Now, situation where x and y are independent, there's something I want you to know today. Okay, this is a special law. Okay, if x and y are independent, the moment generating function of the sum of random variable is actually going to be the same as the product of the respective moment generating function. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Situation where x and y are independent, the moment generating function of the sum of a random variable. Okay, because you know why? Uh, if I have um, m uh, x plus y of t, you know, that would be equal to expected value of exponential raised power x plus y, okay, of t, okay? Now, if you expand that now, you're going to see yourself getting the expected value of uh, gx, okay, multiplied by expected value of exponential raised to power t, y, okay? Look at that. That's what you're going to get at the end of the day. So, which is uh, the product of your respective uh, moment generating of function. Okay, that's what I wanted to take note um, right here. Okay, so which is the same thing that we're talking about here. Okay, I just wanted to take a look uh, at that. Okay, that's a law. Okay, now uh, how, we now want to apply this law to distributions. Okay, for example, we're going to talk about the sum of independent gammas. Okay, with situation, you know, x, i follow gamma with parameter half a high, okay, and beta. Okay, now uh, what I'm trying to talk about here, we have uh, x1 follow gamma distribution. What, 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 what this means, okay, is that x1, okay, follows gamma, okay, with parameter alpha one comma beta, they have the same beta, both x1 and x2, okay, the difference between them, they are both gamma, but they have a different uh, alpha, they have parameter alpha one and alpha two, but they have a common beta, okay? That's what we're trying to say here. Now, we want to use the idea of the moment generating function, okay? And we know that the moment generating function of, uh, of any random variable is that follow gamma distribution is this guy here, okay? That is a moment generating function, okay? Now, uh, then it means the moment generating function of xi based on the information provided, it's actually one minus beta t raised to the power minus alpha i. You know, we did something like that before. Or I, I, will, I don't know whether some of you remember, uh, if x follow gamma, okay, with parameter alpha comma beta, you know that f of x, okay, will be one over beta raised to the power alpha, gamma alpha, x raised to the power alpha minus one, exponential raised power x over. Uh, I don't know whether I, um, whether you remember uh, something like this that we actually did before, okay? Now, if you find the moment generating function, okay, of that, okay, which is gonna be expected value of that, if you wanna do that, of course, you're actually going to integrate, right? You're gonna do ETX, okay, F of X, dx okay the f of x is actually uh this guy here and at the end of the day what you're going to derive is this guy here okay so that is the moment generating function that's what i'm trying to talk about so the moment generating function of a gamma distribution is that okay so take a look at that now you've already been given that one okay you've already been given this one okay now uh, the random variable y, okay, is basically the sum we are seeking to get a moment generating function, okay, of a random variable y that is the sum of gamma. You know, x1, don't forget, x1 follow gamma and x2 follow gamma. Okay, the x1 follow gamma uh, with parameter alpha 1 and beta, and the x2 also follow gamma with parameter alpha 2 and beta. And what we're doing now, we actually were seeking to get the moment generating function of the sum of x1 and x2. 
And of course, if you want to find the moment generating function, the general formula is actually expected value of ty, you know, for random variable y. Okay. Now, uh, if you take a look at what I have here, okay, uh, you know, this actually starts from one to n. I can decide to get that up to n. Okay, the special case of the sum is when I only consider x1 and x2. Let me for first speak in general form. We are, uh, you know, we have x, x, which can be, you know, the, the, x, the xi can be x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xn. Okay, but you know, for any xi, this is a moment generating function, right? Now, what if we're seeking to get the moment generating function of the sum? of x6 that follow gamma, okay? You know, x6, I mean x1 up to xn, not just x1 plus x2 anymore, okay? Now, because of that, your y is gonna be x1 up to xn, look at that. And, you know, this is the same thing as this, and it's actually gonna be the product of the moment generating function of each of the variable, okay? You know, according to the law that I showed you the other time, the moment generating function of the sum of a random variable is actually the product of the respective moment generating function. Now, if this is the moment generating function of a particular xi, okay, particularly the moment generating function of x1, okay, of x1 is one minus beta t raised to power minus alpha one. The moment generating function of x2, okay, it's going to be one minus beta t, okay, raised to the power minus alpha two. So definitely, since I know it's going to be a product of all of that, okay, then you're going to see that this multiplying this multiplying up to, uh, you know, the when we generalize it, and at the end of the day, we're going to have something like this. Look at that. This is the moment generating function for x one, corresponding to that, okay until we get to the last one, let's say that one is a moment generating function of Xn, okay, up, which is that. And at the end of the day, when you simplify this one, of course, you're actually gonna have that. So which is gonna be one minus beta t raised to power, you know, you're gonna have some sum of the alphas, some of the alpha, alpha one plus alpha two, you know, minus into alpha one plus alpha two up to alpha n. Now, what am I trying to talk about right now? What I'm trying to talk about right now is that if I, if a random variable xi follows a gamma distribution with the moment generating function of this, then the moment generating function of the sum of the random variable is actually this guy here. So this is what we want to derive. Look at that. It's actually this guy here. So that guy there is a moment generating function of the sum of random variables that follows gamma distribution. Now, in another in other, in other word, what I'm going to do, if xi follow gamma with parameter alpha high comma beta, then I'm going to conclude that y, which is the sum of all the x's that follow gamma, okay, independent, and they are independent, don't, don't forget, they have to be independent, then they will now, all of them will now follow gamma, okay, with parameter, we now have two parameter now, look at that, the parameter here, is different from parameter here, okay? If you take a look at this one, for a single variable, it has parameter alpha high, but for the sum of all the variable, you're gonna have sum of the alphas, comma beta. Is there anyone who doesn't understand this slide um, before I go to the next slide? Is there anyone who need clarification? Or uh, if, you, if you are good with, the, with this slide, I need you to say yes or you comment yes. Okay, I only see one person that say yes. Uh, do you need me to clarify? Okay, I think a good number of people have said yes. Okay, um, that is for, uh, you know, for that. Now, we want to apply that to all that distributions. You know, right here, we talk about gamma, right? We talk about gamma, okay? In exam, what if examiner give you, um, you know, um, something like this, and you have the moment generating function for a particular variable, and and they ask you to, uh, you know, uh, obtain the moment generating function of the sum 
of the variable. What if I ask a special question like this? Okay, you were given this one. Okay, and I asked you to find the moment generation function of x1 plus x2 plus x3. Okay, you know, I the, this is not up to xn. Okay, now what I'm trying to tell you is that the moment generating function in this scenario, okay, for y of t, okay, will be will be equal to or uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 of t, and at the end of the day, uh, you actually gonna this is what you're gonna have, uh, which is gonna be alpha one plus alpha two plus alpha three. Now that's what you're gonna have. Okay, that's what you're gonna get. Okay, for, you know, for three variables. Okay, the numbers of variables will depends. We determine the numbers of alphas that you actually gonna have. Take a look at that. And uh, the distribution for that is now gonna be Y follows, okay. Um, I'm actually gonna have Y follows gamma. Okay, now the, the the only difference that you're gonna have is that uh, I will start from one if I still want to use, uh, give me one second if I still want to use this, but only that I'm trying to say, okay, my Y is summation XI, I start from one to three. For situation where I have X1, S2, X3, then I'm gonna have my distribution now, okay? We just a little bit change to this. Alpha high, I start from one to three, comma beta. Please watch out. Okay, what well, if I ask you to find the distribution of, I mean, the moment generating function as well as the distribution of Y. What I'm trying to talk about now, this is the distribution of Y. This is a distribution of X. This is a moment generating function of any X. And this here is a moment generating function of uh, sum of X. Okay, now I'm gonna, I wanna move to another distribution right now. And we actually wanna do the same. Okay, here we were talking about the linear function of independent normals. Okay, take a look at this. We have xi that follows normal with mu, with a parameter mu i and sigma i squared. So what we mean right here, okay, what we mean right here is that, okay, you know what, we have x1 follow normal with mu one sigma, you know that sigma? We also have x2 follow normal with mu two and sigma two squared, you know, until we get to xn that follows normal with mu n and sigma and that sigma. Look at that. They have different means, they have different variances. And you know what? All the x's are independent. Okay, but from what we've done before, the moment generating function of uh, of a random variable where that follow normal is this. Look at that. Now, based on this, you know. You were given this now. This is what you are given now, right? That's what you are given. And they say, okay, if y, if a new variable y is a function, is a linear combination of the x6, okay? It's a linear combination of the x6, like, you know, y uh, equal, if you take a look at that, um, you're gonna see uh, this guy, what is this guy is trying to say is, that, okay, y equal a1, uh, x okay uh a1 x1 a2 x2 until you get to a n x n and don't forget uh, each of the x1 the x2 actually follow normal distribution with different mean and variances okay now what, what, what is the question now the question now is can we have can we derive the moment generating function of the sum okay that's what we're doing right here Okay, don't forget, see why? Y is actually the sum, look at that. And according to the law of the moment generating function, the moment generating function of the sum will actually be the product of, you know, uh, of the respective variable, okay? Now, if that is what I'm gonna have, since I know that this is a moment generating function for XI, therefore X1, okay? This is gonna be the moment generating function for X1, this is, or, uh, uh, you know, I'm also going to get the moment generating function for X2, X3, and this guy here is the moment generating function of Xn. So what am I doing here? I'm multiplying all of that, right, together. Okay, so multiplying all of that together, 
you know, using, you know, if you combine all of that, you're actually going to have a single exponential and you're going to have all the exponent. You're going to have all of that, okay, in the exponents. When you do that, okay, uh, if you take a look at this, you know, right here, you get mu one a one t. For the second one, you're going to have mu two a two t. For the third one, mu three a three t. When you look at the pattern of that, you know, this I'm afraid this is what you're going to. This is the generalization, okay. And if you take a look at this side, you're going to have sigma one squared a one t squared divided by two. In another one, you're going to have sigma two squared a two t squared divided by two until you get to the general one. And of course, if you want to write that in short form, this is what you're going to write. So what am I talking about now? Okay, this is going to be the moment generating function of the sum of the random variable. Okay, you know, we are x1, x2 up to xn as, you know, this is the moment generating function of the xi. Take a look at that. Okay, now my distribution now, okay, if this is a moment generating function right now, okay, for the sum of the random variable, okay, where each of them are, each of them follow normal distribution and they are independent. Of course, the, the new distribution that I'm actually going to have for Y now is actually going to be sum of, you know, we're actually going to have, you know, this guy written here and this guy written here. Take a look at that. Is there anyone who want to ask question or any clarification on how I derive my moment generating function and the distribution of the sum of the random variables where each of them follow normal distribution and they are independent? Is there anyone that need more clarification on this page? I have a question quick. Okay, go ahead. So the moment generating function of the sum uh, M Y of T is the, is equal to the product or the sum of the moments of each of the individual equations. Okay. That's a very nice question. Uh, if I had, if I hear you clearly, you said the moment generated function of the sum, you want to know whether it's going to be, uh, equal to the product of the respective moment generated function or sum. Now the moment generated function of the sum will be equal to the product. Take a look at this side here. Okay. Um, if I want to know why, you know, why is actually the sum. Okay. Now the moment generated function of the sum is the product. Like what I'm trying to say now, this guy here is the, is the moment generated function of X1. And we're going to have moment generated function of X2 until we get a moment generated function of Xn. So therefore, the moment generating function of the sum of a random variable can be expressed as a product of the respective moment generated function of the components that make up the random variable. Have I answered your question now? Yeah, that does answer it. So you're, you're multiplying these expected value functions on the line below what you just circled? Exactly. I mean, uh, okay, I'm going to demonstrate one to you now. Let's say, for instance, uh, we're dealing with uh, y equal to x1 plus x2. We're just assuming now, right? Okay, and we know that and, uh, the moment generated function of x, i, is that for normal. We're talking about normal. So what am I trying to say? Okay, mx1 of t will be exp, okay, mu1. Uh, plus, so mu one plus uh, sigma one squared, uh, t squared over two. Then the second one, the moment generated function of the second variable will be exp mu two or uh, sigma two squared t squared over two. Now, what are we seeking to get? We actually want to get the moment generating function of y, right? And uh, what is y? y is the sum of that so x1 plus x2 okay of t and what is the formula you know uh the moment generating function of mx of t is the same thing as expected value of that i think you know that so in this case we now have expected value of e raised to power x1 plus uh x2 t right now when you now expand that okay when you expand that you're going to see that uh, we're going to have expected uh, 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 expected value of uh, e raised to power, uh, you know, t x one, okay. Then multiply by 
uh, we're going to have another one, uh, expected value of uh, e raised to power t s two. Look, as you can see now, it's going to be the product. Have I answered your question now? Yeah, I get that part now. I'm just curious how you take the product of the individual moments functions, how they multiply against each other to produce the sum of a i u i t. Oh, okay. I got what you are saying now. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to clear. Now, if I hear you clearly, what you're trying to say is that you get that, but you are only worried about how do we multiply all this to give all this, yeah. right? Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. Now I'm gonna show you right away. Now let me let me say this is look at look at it. This is the first one, right? Let me write exponential raised to power mu one uh mu one a one t plus sigma one squared a one uh a one t squared uh divided by two. This is the first one. Okay. Now you're gonna see that we're also gonna have the second one. Uh, which is going to be uh, mu two a two t, okay, plus uh, sigma two squared, or uh, a two t squared over two, and you're going to have uh, uh, okay all of that until you get to the last one here, okay? You know that is the last one. Now, uh, if you use the law of indices. You have exponential carry all of this, exponential carry all of this. You know what you can do? You can just simply write a single exponential. Now, when you write a single exponential, look at that. You're going to add this guy to this guy. Can you see that? You know, uh, you're going to add it to the mu three. You know, we have mu one a one t, mu two a two t, mu three a three t, up to mu n. A and T. Now, do you know you can write all of that in short form as summation, okay? Mu I, okay? A I, okay? T. Look at that. That was how we arrived at something like this, okay? Because we have a lot of that. We have, you know, this one, we have that one, and there are a lot, and we are adding them together. You remember when you combine uh, an exponent, if you have exponential response, something what you have on top, you're going to pull all of them together. And this is the representation of that. Okay. Now, you're also going to have this. If you look at the second part, this one, sigma 1 squared a1 t squared over 2. There's another one, sigma 2 squared a2 t squared over 2, until you get to the last one. Okay. That's going to be sigma square n a n t squared over two. If you generalize that again, like writing that in short form, then this is what you're going to write. That's what you're going to see. Do you understand now? Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, you can see what we have. Okay. Now, uh, we want to go into a different thing right now. You know, we've already used the method of uh, moment generating function. We are done with that. But what I want to walk you guys uh, through. Um, before I go, before I go ahead, I already make an announcement today that my office hour is going to be delayed uh, because today uh, I'm actually uh, going to have an extended lecture hour. But you know what? You can if by 9:55. Uh, for those of you that want to log out, you can log out, but I'm still going to be here, okay? So just to tell you that uh, that will affect my office hour and my office hour will start at 11. Okay, now uh, we want to talk about distribution of a Z squared. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, in physics, you know, you have some derived quantity, right? Also in statistics, mathematics, uh, we also have a uh, situation where some probability distributions are being derived from another probability distribution, okay? Now, uh, if Z, you know, if, if, if a Z, if Z, okay, which is a standard normal distribution, okay? You know, uh, when Z follow a normal distribution which means zero and variance one, then we're talking about standard normal distribution. Now, the question now is, uh, I may be seeking so when I when I square z, okay, we are interested in the probability distribution that that is going to give. I want to tell you uh, when when z follow a standardized a standard normal distribution and we square z, 
we are not going to have standard normal distribution anymore. That will give us a new distribution. And that is what I want to show you now by using movement generating function, we can actually, uh, you know, seek to, de uh, to determine the probability distribution of a random variable. Uh, you know, you know, Z square here is also going to be a function of a random variable because when Z follow a normal distribution, we are seeking to know what the distribution of Z square is going to be. Now, if you want to start, of course, Z follow normal distribution would mean zero and one. This is it, right? This is a probabilistic uh, representation of that. Okay, and you know what? Uh, and but right now we are seeking to we are trying to find the moment generating function of what of a z squared not of z okay we want to use the method of moment generating function right now to be able to determine what the probability distribution of z square is going to be okay we don't know that okay we don't know it okay what we know at the moment we know z we know the probability distribution of Z, okay? And with the method of moment generating function, we were, we were seeking to know the probability distribution of Z squared. And that was why, if you take a look at this, what am I saying? I'm, try, I'm seeking to get the moment generating function of a Z squared. Look at that, okay? And if I want to get that, of course, the moment generating function of a Z squared, uh, it means what I'm actually going to do is expected value, okay? you know, uh, of exponential uh, t z squared. That's what I want to find, okay? And you know what? Don't forget that this is the same thing as uh, for continuous random variable, it's going to be integral, right? Okay, so it's going to be integral exponential is power that squared, then f of z, okay, dz, okay? So this is what we actually want to use. And that is what we're interpreting right here. Okay, my f of z is actually this guy here. The f of z is a standard normal distribution. Take a look at that. Okay, and don't forget the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now uh, when you get here, when you combine this guy, this is an exponential, and this is another exponential. Okay, when you combine that together using the law of indices, of course, this is what you're going to have. Okay, take a look at that. That's what you're gonna have. Okay, now when you get here now, okay, you know, uh, minus infinity to infinity is the same thing as two times is is to infinity. I think you know that. You know, if you have uh, minus infinity, infinity right here, and is zero right here, then you're gonna see that uh, minus infinity to infinity is gonna be two times is zero to infinity. So changing. Uh, the band, the the lower, you know, the boundary here. So it's zero to infinity. You got to multiply by two. Take a look at that. We still have the whole of this. Can you see that now? Okay. Now, when you have the whole of this, the next thing you can do right now, okay, the next thing you can do right now uh, is actually to let uh, you let u to be z squared. Okay, let u be z squared, and automatically uh, z will be square root of that. Then you need to find uh, the ZDU because you, are, you can no longer use the Z anymore, okay? And when you find the ZDU, then what is your disease? The Z is this, right? Then we're using method of substitution now, then wherever I see the Z here, I'm gonna plug in the whole of that, okay? And don't forget, uh, uh, I'm, I'm already substituted for Z squared. And when I do that, I'm actually uh, gonna have this. Look at that, this is what I'm gonna have. And the moment I have um, this guy here, Okay, take a look at that. This is what I'm actually going to have. Okay, uh, if you understand it up to, if you understand uh, what I'm doing, okay, if you really understand uh, what I'm doing after plugging in uh, the whole of that up to this junction, okay, I need you to come in yes or you say yes. If you understand what I did up to that junction, I need you to come in yes, or you say yes, okay? But if you don't understand, of course, you can actually uh, interrupt me, okay? You can actually interrupt me, okay? Now, um, if you take a look at what I have now, uh, we are already here, okay? Now, when we are already, when we are here now, okay? When we are here now, okay? We have a, a u raised to power that, and um, exponential raised to power minus u, uh, into that, okay. Take a look at that, okay. Now, when you if you take you take a look, you would uh, actually see it, 
you know, when you, the moment you plug in the whole of this, okay, and at the end of the day, that should automatically uh, take you, you know, uh, since you got it to this junction, I can rewrite u raised to the power minus half as the same thing as this, okay? You know, if you look at that, what is half minus one? Okay, half minus one is minus half. So this guy is still the same thing as this guy, okay? And this guy here is still the same thing as this guy. Now, when we get to this junction now, uh, give me one second. When you get to this junction now, for you to move forward, then we need to apply this law. You got to take note of this. So for moving from here to here, okay, you, you have to use this according to law. Okay, in the integral zero to infinity, y raised to the power alpha minus one, exponential is power minus y over beta the y is gamma alpha beta raised to the power alpha. Now, if you use that on this, okay, if you use that on this, you're going to see one over square root of two pi is here. Okay, then if you take a look at this, this is very close to this. Look at that. This is u. This is y, right? This is carry half minus one. This is alpha minus one. And this is exponential as power minus u over that. And look at what you have, y. And we can, if we can rewrite this as this, then we're going to rewrite that as that. Look at that. If you really understand using this, okay, to rewrite this as this, I need you to come in, yes, if you really understand what transpired. Oh my God, okay, good job. So that's the way you're gonna do that. Now, this is where we are now. This is where we are now, okay? Now, one over two pi is one over two pi, and you know what, gamma half. Gamma half is square root of pi. You have to take note, okay? Gamma half is the square root of pi, okay? So instead of gamma half, I'm gonna have square root of pi, right? Take a look at that. Okay, and if you take a look at this guy here, okay, two raised to the power half means square root of two. Look at that. Okay, and if you take a look at this guy, one minus two t raised to the power, you know, this is a denominator right here, right? If this one goes up, it's going to be one minus two t raised to the power minus half, which is this guy here. Now, by the time you simplify, okay, you know, the you know this and this, we cancel that. Okay, we're only going to have that. What do we have now? Okay. This is the moment generating function that we derived. And you know what? If you take a look at this, okay, you're going to see that this is this actually resemble the moment generating function of a gamma distribution. Let's see. You remember the other time, the moment generating function of gamma is one minus beta t, okay, one minus beta t raised to the power minus alpha, okay. If you compare this with this then it means our beta equal to two, right? Look at that, our beta equal to two, okay? And our alpha okay, equal to half. And situation in gamma distribution, where alpha, equal, where alpha equal to half and beta equal to two, that will give us a new distribution actually called chi-squared. That will give us a chi-squared distribution, okay? that will give us a chi-square distribution. So which means the moment generating function we have here is that of a chi-square distribution. Now, what is the takeaway? The takeaway now is that if a Z follow a standardized normal distribution, then the square of Z will follow a chi-square distribution. A chi-square distribution is another probability distribution that is very, very useful in statistics. So this is how a chi-square distribution was derived. Is there anyone who want to ask question or who need clarification before I move to the next slide? Okay, now that means you guys are good. Okay, uh, we are, uh, the next thing that we want to talk about now, uh, the distributions of X bar, the, or the distribution of the mean and the variance. Okay, the distribution of the sample mean and the sample variance. Okay, for no matter, you know, uh, in statistical analysis, uh, it's very, very essential for us to know the probability uh, distribution of the mean and the sample variance. The distribution of the mean, okay, 
don't forget when I say average, that's a uh, average is a function of x6, right? I think you know that. And sample variance is also a function too. And then the same way we can find the probability distribution of a z squared, of a zero superatory, and something like that, we can also find the probability distribution of uh, x bar and the sample variance, okay, for normal data. Okay, now let us start with this. Okay, you know, before we can talk about average, right? Okay, the average is going to be the sum of what? The average, the sample mean, okay, is the sum of the x's, right? Divided by n. I think you know that. And what of each of the x, each of the x1, x2, whatever, follow normal distribution, each of them have their probability distribution called normal. Okay, take a look at that. Okay. And then they are identically and independently distributed. I think you know that. And you know what? When you take a look at what I have here, okay, you're actually going to see that uh, divided by n, the weight, you are giving them equal weight, 1 over n, okay, multiplied by xi. And my 1 over n here is more or less a constant, okay? That was why I said 1 over n is a constant, okay? Okay, now, uh, you know, you also need to take note, okay, that some of the deviation, this is a deviation, deviation is when you are subtracting the mean from the respective random variable, some of the deviation must be equal to zero. This is how it is zero, okay? Now, let's go to the sample variance. We know that the sample variance, this is a formula, right? To figure out the sample variance. And another, we have another alternative way to write this expression. Another alternative way to write this expression is this way, look at that where we have one over two n into n minus one submission, submission, xi minus xj all squared. We know xi and xj, we're trying to say, uh, x, uh, the variable here is different from the variable here, okay? Now, when you take a look at this now, now take a look at this. Introduce x bar, you know the mean, okay? Introduce x bar and plus x bar, that will cancel out. If you take a look at what I have here, okay, what have, what have I just done? You know, here it is minus x bar, and here it's going to be plus x bar, you know, when you use, uh, you know, which is going to cancel out, which means we still have this, right? Okay, what we just did here, we just introduced x bar in it, okay? Now, when you introduce x bar, look at the square here, okay, you're actually going to apply a minus b all squared. And what is a minus b all squared? It's going to be a squared, b squared, minus 2ab. That's exactly what we have here, look at that. That's what we have here, expanding that, okay? That's what we have here. Okay, now, uh, you know, we have two summation, right? Okay, we got two summation right here, right? Okay, now let's for first take a look at this, this summation here. Now, if you take a look at this, if you, call, if you are using the summation right here, you are starting from J start from one to N, but what we have inside here does not have anything to do with J. We only have XI, right? There's no J. Therefore, our J start from one to N will become N. That's a constant, will become n, okay? Now, if it's gonna become n here, but you know, there's a j here, right? We have sj here, right? And you are summing from j to, from j star from one to n. Then uh, in that situation, that this will not become a constant here, but this will still remain, look at that. But what will become a constant of this is this guy here, because this is, a, this is i star from one to n, but this is j, that's why you have this. Look at that, can you see that now? And the two summation, Okay, because we have xi and there's a summation that starts from i and we have sj, there's a summation that starts from that. Then the two of them here, yeah, we're gonna have these two summation. That's why you have this, okay? But you know what? We can prove that this guy here is gonna give you zero when you expand that, okay? It's gonna give you zero. Now we're gonna be left with this entity and this entity, which is right here and right here, okay? Now, if we are left with this entity and this entity, now you know that from here, you know from here that summation of this is equal to what? N minus one S squared, okay? If you multiply that one, it's gonna give you that one, right? Then I can use it here, okay? Now take a look at this. Instead of this guy, I'm gonna write N minus one S squared. What, what am I using? Using the fact that this equal to this times that. Look at that. That's what I'm using right here. Then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Look at that. And at the end of the day, by the time I combine this with this, oh my God, I'm going to have two of that. Then by the time you cancel that, you, you're going to have the sample variance. Look at that. So therefore, S squared now 
is a function of the difference x of the sample. Look at that. That's what we just show right now. Look at that. Okay. Now, uh, another thing that I want to show now, okay, we now want to, for instance, if x1 follow normal and x2 follow normal, uh, can we have a way to derive the moment generating function for the sum and at the same time for the difference? So that's what we can do. Okay for the sum of the random variable x1 and x2 and for the difference. Okay, I'm considering case two right here. Okay, and don't forget x1 and x2 followed normal. They have the same mean and the same variance. Okay, now if you had t1 equal to x1 plus x2 because x1 follow as a mean mu and variance sigma square and x2, if you add that, it means you're gonna have two mu and two sigma squared. Don't forget that x1 and x2 here According to what we are what we're given here, they have the same mean, they have the same variances. Adding them together is adding their mean and adding their variances. And how can we get the moment generated function of this? Of course, the moment generated function of this is automatically going to be what I have here: two mu t and two sigma squared t square over two. Then what about the moment generated function of the difference? Okay, now um, uh, if x1 has a mu of this and x2 have the same mean. What is the difference between them? The mean, the difference is the mean in mean will be zero. Okay? Because mu minus mu. But the but how does the variance still become two sigma squared? I'm going to show you now. Take a look at that. What to find the variance of D, right? Which is variance of x2 minus x1. And that is going to be the same as uh, variance of x2 plus the variance of x1. And don't forget the variance of S2 is sigma squared. The variance of X1 is sigma squared. Okay, adding them together, we still give you two sigma squared. Okay, and I wanted to take note of that. Okay, then we are seeking moment generating function for this. Okay, if I were you, okay, from here, the only thing you need to do is plug in mu to, for, to zero. Plug in zero for mu. Then you're going to go from here to here. Look at that. Then you are done. Okay, so what I'm just trying to explain here is how can you find the moment generating function of the diff of the of the uh, you know the sum and of the difference, and you know what you can also find the moment generating function of the combination of the two, both the sum and the difference. That's what I'm doing right here. Okay, here I'm seeking to know the moment generating function at the same time, the moment generating function for the for the sum and for the difference. Okay, take, take a look at that. Okay, it's gonna be this. Okay, what is T? T is the addition, right, of the variables. What is D? The difference, right? If you simplify this guy here, okay, you're gonna have this, right? And at the end of the day, what, what does that mean? This guy here will be written as a product, isn't it? As a product. So take a look at that, and that's exactly, and when it is written as a product, all what you just need to do is, okay, what is the moment? generate function of this guy here. Okay, is this guy, for this one, is this guy, then you multiply them, right? Multiplying them, what does that mean? Okay, because you have the exponential, exponential, it means you're gonna add this to this, right? Adding this to this, we give you this. Adding this to this, we give you this, okay? Like I said, you're adding this to this, okay? Because you wanna use a single exponential, right? Okay, and that's gonna give you this. Okay, adding this to this will give you that. You can, you know, work out that mathematics out. Okay, now, now this is what you have now. Of course, you're gonna say T canceled, um, you know, um, you have a T1, T1 here, that's gonna be two T1, right? Minus two T, we cancel that one, right? We're gonna be left with this. And here, you're gonna simplify, then you're gonna come, come with this. And at the end of the day, what have you done? You actually seen that at the end of the day, it's gonna give you uh, the moment generated function of one. So the product of the two moment generated function, which is, this is the moment generated function of the sum. And this is the moment generated function of the difference. So the, the, the proof here is just to show the world that it's actually gonna be the product of the moment generated function, okay? That is exactly, what we just did. Okay, now uh, we want to also talk about, you know, like I said, this is 954, okay? I'm actually gonna have an extended, um, 
lecture today, okay? Like I'm gonna walk you through up to, okay, up to this one, okay? I, in my special lecture, okay, I'm gonna uh, start other statistics, okay? In the special lecture that I'm actually gonna be recorded, but I wanna finish this uh, before I go today, okay? I wanna finish that. Okay, now distribution of S squared, okay? Distribution of sample variance. That's what we mean, okay? Now, uh, if Xi follows normal distribution, okay? And you know what? Uh, if, 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 we, if there exists a Z high, you know, uh, if X follow normal, we can actually derive you know, a Z score. I think you know that the Z score is gonna be based on Xi, right? And the Z score is gonna be Xi minus the mean over the standard deviation, okay? And don't forget the Z score is, it follows standardized normal distribution. I think you know that. And I've derived today that the square of the Z, we follow a chi-square distribution with degree of freedom one. You know, I derived that today, right? Okay. Now, what if I'm interested in the sum? I'm interested in the sum of the Z high. Why am I interested in the sum of this? Because don't forget, that has to do with the sample variance. You know, sample variance. Okay. Now, I want to square this guy now, squaring this. Okay. And I want to find the sum of that. You know, let me tell you this, in order not to confuse you, okay? When we have a z-score, when we square that, the probability distribution of a z-score actually gives us a chi-square, right? But right now, we are not only interested in a z-score, but we are interested in the sum of a z-score, okay? If you take a look at this guy here, we are interested in, you know, sum of a z-score, okay? We are interested in Z1, Z2, up to Zn that follow, each of them follow uh, a chi-square distribution. Then we are now seeking to know what, what is actually going to be the probability distribution of the sum of a Z, of, of, a, of a square, sum of square, of a Z-score, okay? And don't forget, each Z-squared, okay, each Z-squared is a chi-squared. So which means what we're doing right here, we actually... Uh, talking about the sum of uh, chi squared, okay? Sum of a chi squared. You know, a sing this is a single chi squared because it's a, a chi squared with one degree of freedom. Then if I if I sum that, then I'm going to be talking about chi squared with n degree of freedom, okay? I'm going to say that again, okay? For z for if for z one squared has that one, and if I want to find the sum of that, then it means I'm going to be talking about n. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, chi square with n degree of freedom, okay? And then with chi degree of freedom is more or less that I'm talking is much more a gamma with parameter alpha equal to n over two and beta equal to two. Now, uh, I'm I'm, gonna, I'm working I'm still working on that. So this guy is the, is this is the guy, okay? Now because I'm summing, I start from one to n, okay? The sigma square here is a constant is going to come out. Look at that. Then I'm going to be left with summation x i minus mu square. Look at that. Now introduce x bar here and plus x bar that will cancel out. Look at that. I introduce minus x bar and the plus x bar that will, cancel, that will say cancel out. So this guy here is the same thing as this guy here. Okay. Now, if this is what I have right now, okay, a here, this is looking like a plus b or squared. Okay. Which is going to give you a squared, uh, b squared plus 2ab. Okay. I think you know that. So that is actually, so expanding this right now, because you have a square here, we give you this guy, this guy, and this guy, okay? Now, i use the summation now to multiply each of that, because don't forget you are summing i star from one to n, so that will be summation of this, right? Okay, Do, is there any xi here? There's no xi, right? The summation will turn to n, that's why you have this, okay? Now, because there is xi here, there's a the summation, we grab that, that's why you have summation on the XI. Can you see that now? Okay. Now I told you the other time the entity there is going to be zero. Why? Because we're talking about independent. For independent, that entity is going to be zero. Then we're going to be left with this guy and this guy now. Okay. Now this guy is this guy. This guy is this guy, right? Okay. Now you know that sample variance is summation XI minus mu or squared over n minus one. I think you know that. The sample variance equal to that, right? Then 
then it means this guy here will be equal to what? N minus one times S squared. Okay, if you cross multiply, you want to get this guy? So which means this guy here, we're going to plug in what? This multiplied by that. That's what we're doing here. Look at that. Okay, then plus this guy here. Okay, now this is what we have now, right? Take a look at that. That's the special we have. Now, uh, it, it, what, what, what is the takeaway from here? What is the takeaway? The takeaway is that S squared is part of this one. X bar is part of this one. And that in, in the case that X bar and S squared, they are independent. Okay, this proved the theory in statistics that mean and sample variance, sample mean and sample variance are independent. In statistical analysis, you know, the theory, you know, actually suggests, okay, before we can have a meaningful, uh, you know, result, okay, the, the two of them have to be independent. And this is what this equation is showing. You can see S bar is part of this one and S square is part of this one, okay? So that shows they are in the, now they are independent. Now, in that situation, you know, we can seek to get the moment. And if they are independent, what does that mean? If they are independent, if I find the moment generating function of the sum, okay, if this is a variable now, and this is a variable now, if I find the moment generating function of the sum, what are we going to have? Is you give us the products of the respective moment generating function, right? I think you know that. And that is the reason why here we want to find the moment generating function of the sum. And that, I mean, of this guy here and this guy here. That's what we're trying to do right now, okay? Now, the moment generating function of that, okay? Like I said, it's gonna be a product, right? Don't forget, the moment generating function of the sum is gonna be a product, right? Okay? And if it is a product, automatically, we, it's gonna end up, we're gonna end up in a moment generating function for chi-squared with n degree of freedom, okay? You can see, the way we end up, take a look at that, okay? Now, uh, if you continue like that, like I said, uh, you're actually going to end up there, but you know what? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we said the other time, the moment generation of the sum, okay, will, will be moment generation of, the, of, of each of that, right? Of this, of the entity, okay? And of course, all that will be equal to this, okay? All these ones here will be equal to that, and we have the moment generation function of a chi square with n degree of freedom. Okay. Now, if I uh, actually consider this entity now, the, okay, the entity now, this guy now. Okay. And what I'm trying to say in essence is that the hex bar we follow normal distribution with the mean of this. You remember in sampling distribution, um, the uh, the mean of a sampling distribution. Uh, let me see. I think I have a chart. Um, let me see. Have somebody? Oh, okay. No, I don't have a chart. Okay. So this is the mean, and this is the variance. Okay. You know, x by here becomes a random variable. Look at that. You know what you're doing? Something distribution where we have several means. You go into a population several times. You compute average, different averages. What is the average of averages? Is this guy here? Okay. And what is the mean? Okay of that, I mean, what is the variance of the averages is this guy here, that's what I'm trying to say, okay? And from there, you know that your z-score associated with that will be x bar minus the mean of the mean. This is like the mean of the sampling distribution divided by the standard error, okay? Now, you know, and the standard error is defined as sigma over root n, okay? So if you remodify this, this is what you're gonna have. And of course, the distribution of the z, don't forget, the distribution of the z, a standardized normal, right? That's a mean zero and variance one, okay? Now, when you square this, when I square this, of course, it's gonna take us to chi-square, you know that? Square Z, we take out chi-square, square that, you know, take out to chi-squared, and of course, this is a moment generative function of the chi-square, okay? Now, coming back to what we're doing, okay, the moment generative function of the second part, the N minus one S square sigma square, you know, we have two parts, I'm talking about this part, Okay, the moment generative function of, uh, you know, the, the one we derive here is just the moment generative function of this part. Okay, that is the one we derive here. Now, we want to derive the moment generative function for this one. Okay, that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're trying. Uh, that's what we're trying to do now. So, the moment generative function of that is just going to be the ratio of what we got before, okay, of this one, okay, divided by that one, which is at the end of the day, uh, 
you, you're going to find yourself here. What does that mean? We have, what do we have now? We have another movement generated for some, but the degree of freedom here is now N minus one. Okay. And some of you may be wondering, in some, the difference between sample variance and the population variance is that uh, if for sample variance, we divide summation X uh, minus mu all squared divided by N minus one. But for population of the variant, we divide it by n. And this is the reason why we normally divide by n minus one. Look at that. You're going to see that at the end of the day, okay, the moment generative function of that end up giving us that. Okay, well, what does that imply? And that implies we're actually going to be talking about a chi square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom. Okay, so that is the expression. Okay. Um, uh, in, the, in another video, uh, okay, uh, before, uh, this is the summary, the summary of everything. Okay, if X1 up to Xn is from normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then in practice, we observe that sample mean and sample variance, okay, you know, not the population values, okay? So the sample mean and the sample variance, you know, we've uh, already proved that they are independent. Okay, and you know what? We use the sample values and their distribution to make inferences. In statistical analysis, we don't study the entire population, but you, but we are they, we have to follow rules before we can actually use samples. Okay, you know, the samples have to be a good representative of the population. Okay, now uh, basically, you know, the sample mean is given as this, and of course, the sample mean follow a normal distribution with a mean of that. And this is a variance, variance of S bar, okay? And you know, the sample variance is actually this formula here. I've told you the reason why we divide by N minus one and not by N, okay? And of course, uh, the probability distribution of this guy here, we follow a chi-square with N minus one degree of freedom, which is what I showed before, okay? And I've also showed that S bar and the, you know, the sample mean and the sample variance are independent. But do you know, that uh, I can also derive a new probability distribution if I have a situation where I'm subtracting mu from S bar divided by that, and that is take us a T distribution. Now, how do I go from here to here? Uh, you know, what I want to show you, there's a relationship between T distribution and Z dist and um, standardized normal distribution. Now, when you start from here, okay, when you start from here, now divide both sides, divide the ratio, divide this guy, okay, by, by, this, quantity, by this quantity. Okay, divide this one by this quantity. Also divide this by that quantity. Okay, if I divide this guy by square root of, by, uh, by sigma over root n, it's gonna be this guy, right? Look at that. Now I'm gonna divide this one as well by that. Okay, now I, I wanted to see what I'm gonna do now. Okay, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do now. Give me one second. If I have X over root N, okay, divided by sigma over root N. Okay, now you are and then you're gonna see that the root N cancel root N, right? We're gonna have X over sigma, right? Now, uh, when I have X over sigma, another way to write it, I can write square root and write S squared over sigma squared. It's still the same, right? The square root of that and that will still give us this, right? Okay. And I decided to multiply, to divide each one. I mean, to multiply each one. You know, this is what I have now. S squared over sigma squared. What if I decide to multiply each of that by minus one that can still cancel out? That's exactly what I'm doing here. Look at that. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. And what is this guy? That's a Z score, okay? And what is this guy? Look at that, this guy itself, okay? That guy itself is a chi-squared, okay? That guy itself is a chi-squared, look at that, okay? And that was how I got this, okay? So which means there's a relationship between a T distribution and a Z distribution. So look at that. Is there anyone who want to ask question because this is where I'm actually going to stop. And you know what? Um, when is I'm going to, uh, the video that I said I'm going to record, 
is basically going to be on other statistics. And that video will be shared with you. Okay. But on Monday, on Monday, I'm actually going to walk you through uh, practice questions in exam. Okay. Check the announcement section. I've already uploaded some exercise. 70% of my question, okay, we come from this exercise. 70%, uh, you know, you know, we're gonna have theory, right? We're gonna have a short answer question. It's 70%. So, you know, because short answer question is gonna be of uh, 70% of the exam, and the 30% will be multiple choice. The 30% multiple choice will be cumulative. We come. We come, but my but the seventy percent the short answer question will come from those exercises that I share with you last night. So so start battling with them, okay? But on Monday I'm going to walk you through that. But before Monday I'm going to make a special video on other statistics, okay? I'm going to make special video on other statistics that will be shared with you. Is there anyone want to ask question before I go today? Is there anyone? Is there anyone want to ask question before uh, I go today? Yeah, okay. so, so we will get the meeting um, to grade this week. Uh, oh, thank you so much. You will get midterm to grade today. Okay. We have already graded it. And yeah, she has, uh, my TA has graded it, but I'm looking at it because before I allow her to post, I have to for first check. So you're going to see the midterm to result today. Yeah, and also uh, just for a uh, confirmation, so for the extra credits, we can use whatever like uh, credits we got for to cover all the missed grades about uh, for midterm or the, the assignments or finals, right? That's a very good question. You know, um, after the final exam, uh, the meet the um, the extra credit that you have earned throughout the semester. Then I'm going to send message to everyone that you need to you need to send a message to me on how you want to spend it. You can spend your me time on you can decide to spend your me time on assignment. You can spend it on me time one or me time two. You can also spend it on final. So that is up to you. But uh, after the final exam, I'm actually going to send a message uh, via uh, announcement section to uh, inform you. Uh, you know, to hear from you on how you want to spend your extra credit. Have I answered your question? Uh, so, uh, can we do a mixture? I mean, we have a like, if we have a, like quite a bit extra credits, just spend that like in the homework and also meeting and final, right? Yeah, you know, uh, okay, are you asking whether you can do a mixture, like whether you can split yeah. your extra credits? Is that what you mean? Splitting yeah. it? Oh yeah, you know, you know why? It's your S, it's your credit. <laughs> so okay. you're gonna tell me, you, know, you, you, you you can just say, okay, this is my extra credit. This is how I want to spend it. Okay, I, okay, put some points. Maybe you have, for instance, maybe you have seven points. I'm just assuming. You can mm -hmm. say, okay, put three points in my midterm one. Oh, put the remaining four points in my final, and that will be done. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Thanks okay. a lot. You're welcome. Uh, is there anyone want to ask question again? Uh, let me say that, um, uh, like I said, I'm going to have my office hour today by 11. Uh, I've already sent message across to everyone. Uh, I mean, using the announcement section. And there's going to be a another lecture, but that lecture you don't need to attend this. I'm actually going to be recorded and that will be shared with you. And it's going to be a lecture on other statistics. Okay. But on Monday, okay, on Monday, I'm actually going to walk you through some practice questions, the final practice question. And I'm going to give you information about the final and stuff like that. Okay. That will be on Monday. But you know what? If I were you, okay, start focusing on those exercises that I sent to you as practice question because the 70% of my questions will actually be derived from those questions word for word. 70% will come from there, word for word. Quote me, word for word, 70%. No twisting, there's not gonna be any twisting. 70% of my question 
probably uh, you know uh, that will cover the you know the short answer because the short answer question will be seventy percent. Okay, but the multiple choice will be cumulative. The multiple choice will be thirty percent. The short answer is going to be seventy percent. Okay, but you know what? Um, the exercise that I sent to you the other time and uh, last night. Okay, to the announcement section, please start working on them. But you know what? On Monday, I'm actually going to work you through some practice question on Monday. And before Monday, be expecting a video from me, which is going to be the last lecture video. Okay, it's going to be pre recorded. And that last lecture video is going to be on other statistics. Okay, the other statistics materials have already been shared with you. Okay, but I'm going to explain what we mean by other statistics in that video. Okay, uh, is there anyone want to ask question before I go today? Is there anyone? Yeah, sorry, I have another like final one. So will the multi choices question um, also covering uh, chapter five and six, same as the other short short answer question? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, the multiple choice will be cumulative. Will be we you know we cover all topics that we have done have i answered your question oh okay yeah i just missed that term that's great thank yeah. you you're welcome okay uh this is an opportunity to ask question okay if you still want to ask question you can go ahead okay in the absence of uh, a question i want to appreciate everyone who have attended my lecture today, and I hope you guys enjoy it. But until um, Monday, that I'm actually going to come your way uh, with a uh, review. We're not going to be, you know, have a review on uh, practice questions. Okay. Uh, I want to say you should stay safe. Okay. Make sure you stay safe and have a good day. So bye for now, guys. Yeah. Thank you too. Yep.